Have you ever spent hours color grading a video only to come back 10 minutes later and look at your grade and think, this is awful. <laughs> well, you're definitely not alone. Color grading can be confusing when the tools don't do what you expect them to do. But that's why I'm going to show you my color grading workflow to take a dull image like this and turn it into something that pops like this. I should also add, the majority of this tutorial is from one of my previous videos where I re-edited the whole of one of my subscribers' videos, but I just thought the color grading section could do with being its own standalone tutorial. Zane's A-roll is looking way too dark and just a bit dull. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I would grade his footage to fix this. So if I come over to the color page, I can see here that all Zane has really done is he's added some saturation and brought down the contrast a little bit, which isn't really enough for an image like this. So if I just reset this grade, I'm gonna start it again from scratch. What I'm gonna do first is I'm actually gonna open up Zane's project settings, come over to color management, and then set his timeline color space to this one, which is DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate, and then set the output color space to Rec 709. Now this isn't gonna change any of the colors on any of the images or titles or anything like that on the timeline, but what it does do is it gives me the option to grade in the DaVinci Wide Gamma color space, which is basically a bigger color space than Rec 709, which means that I have more control and flexibility with Zane's grade. So to be able to grade in the DaVinci Wide Gamma color space, you just have to tell DaVinci Resolve that you want to go into that color space for the grade and then back out to Rec 709 at the end of the grade. Luckily, this is really easy to do. If you're working with the same color management settings that I am, then you can do this with just two nodes. So I've got the first one already, and then I can right click on that node, come down to add node, and then click add serial. This is gonna add another node. Then I'm gonna add the color space transform effect to the first node, and I'm gonna set the input color space and the input gamma to Rec 709, because Zane didn't film in log. And then the output color space to DaVinci Wide Gamut, and the output gamma to DaVinci Intermediate. This has now put the grading environment into that DaVinci Wide Gamut color space. But what I need to do is I need to take it back out of this at the end of the grade, and put it back to Rec 709, which is the standard color space that our videos export in. So I'll just click on the first node, hit Command C to copy, then select the second node and hit Command V to paste. And that's pasted that same color space transform onto the second node. And then I just hit swap so that it's going from DaVinci Wide Gamut back to Rec 709. This is also a really helpful workflow if you're working with log footage. So this footage of me here was shot in Vlog, and if I set this to go from Vlog into DaVinci Wide Gamut, and then DaVinci Wide Gamut to Rec 709, it's gonna convert my footage from Log to Rec 709, which gives me a better starting point to grade from, rather than having the normal washed out log footage, while still keeping all of the color information in the clip. Once that's set up, I can move on to the actual grade. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fix the exposure. So basically the brightness of the image. So I'm gonna add a node and label it as exposure. To fix the exposure of this image, I need to use something called a waveform. To bring this up, I just need to turn on the scopes with this button and then open up this drop-down menu and select waveform. This waveform is effectively showing the brightness levels of different parts of the image, with zero being black and then 1023 being white. So if I turn on the qualifier tool and hover my mouse over the wall behind Zane, you can see a little circle is indicating that the wall behind Zane is around 250, which is quite dark. And then if I hover my mouse over Zane's skin, you can actually see Zane's skin on the waveform here is around 500. So everything in the image is being represented on the waveform waveform from left to right. So just by looking at this waveform, I can see that the whole image is quite dark because it's on the lower end of the spectrum. So you might be wondering, well, what should the correct exposure look like on the waveform? Well, a general rule of thumb is if your subject has lighter skin, then their skin levels should be sitting at around just under 700 on the waveform and darker skin should be around 500, but this is just a rough guide. So with my exposure node selected, I'm gonna open up the HDR wheels. HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. So these controls make the most of the wider color space that I'm editing in. I'm then going to use the exposure slider on the global control to bring up the exposure of the image until his skin is sitting roughly where I think it should be. I'm not worrying about anything else in the image yet, I'm just looking at his skin. So about here looks good. 
This exposure slider is a great way to bring up the exposure in a more natural way than the normal color wheels do. This is effectively simulating how a real camera would actually increase the exposure rather than just lifting everything up altogether. But it won't actually behave in the same way if you're grading in a normal Rec. 709 color space, so just remember that. Next, I'm going to move on to white balancing our image. So I'm going to add another node and call it white balance, or WB for short. This time, I'm going to change my waveform over to a vector scope. This allows me to see the colors and the saturation of the image. You can see around the edges of the scope, we have letters. Each letter is indicating a color. So we have red, magenta, blue, cyan, green and yellow. The same as what these color wheels show. And then the center of the circle represents pure white. So ideally what I want to do is find something in the image that should be white. So I can see that the wall behind Zane should be white. And then if I hover over the wall with my qualifier, I can see in the vector scope that it's actually pushing towards red rather than white. So I'm going to use the global HDR color wheel and I'm just going to slowly push it away from red and try and get that wall behind Zane to be in the middle of the vector scope. And now you can see if I hover over the wall, the qualifier circle is in the middle, showing that this is now true white. So that's a really easy way to white balance your image. So here it is before and after. Next, I need to add some contrast to the image because it's looking a bit flat. So I'm adding another node and calling it contrast. And this time I'm going to use the curves to do this. So the high end of the curves represents the brightest parts of the image, while the lower end represents the darker parts. So I'll open the waveform back up, and if I drag this point up, it's gonna bring the shadows up. But if I bring it this way, it's gonna bring the shadows down. But I don't wanna bring the skin down with it. So before I touch the curve, I'm gonna use the qualifier and click on the skin, which adds a marker to the curve, indicating that this is where the skin level is on the curve. Now, if I drag the darker areas down, it's not gonna affect the skin as much. And now you can see that if I toggle this node on and off, it's added a nice bit of contrast. Next, I want to have a look at the saturation. So for this, I'm going to use the color slice tool. So on the vector scope, you'll see there's a thin line here. This is the skin tone indicator. You basically want the skin to fall on this line. So at the moment, I can see that the skin is just pushing slightly too far to the reds. So I'm going to come over to the skin controls on the color slice and click and hold on this button here. This is highlighting the parts of the image that are going to be affected by this control. If I let go of my left click and then hit shift H, it's going to activate the same highlight tool, meaning I can then use this center control to shift the selection to see if I can grab even more of the skin color. And then if I move this red center over to the left as well and come back to the skin highlighter, I've now got even more of the skin selected as it was slightly red at the start. Now I can use the hue control to push the skin away from the red and more towards the skin line on the vector scope, whilst being careful not to push it too far towards yellow. I can then use this control to push the saturation ever so slightly, but being careful because if any colors reach the boxes on the vector scope, then they're probably too saturated. I can also use this control to make his skin lighter or darker, but about here is fine. So this is without the saturation correction and this is with. Next, I want to do a very subtle version of something called split toning. Split toning is where you have two opposite colors between the shadows and the highlights of an image to give a color contrast that makes the subject pop. Probably the most popular version of this is called the orange and teal look, where the background is dark with a teal undertone and the skin of the subject stands out as it's on the opposite sides of the vector scope, as you can see here. It's really popular in big Hollywood films. The only problem with doing that to an image like this is that it doesn't really work with a white background, as you can see here. So I'm just gonna do a subtle one. I'm gonna open up the curves and click on red. And then I'm gonna qualify Zane's skin so that doesn't get affected. And then I'm just gonna bring that down a little bit just to make sure. I can do this by holding down the Option key or Alt if you're on Windows and then dragging it down the line a little bit. I'm then gonna grab the red shadows and drag them in this direction. So it pushes the opposite of red into the darker parts of the image, which is cyan, also known as teal. I don't wanna overdo this, so even a small amount like this is fine. You can see that even this small amount is having an effect on the vector scope and giving the image a very small split toning effect. This isn't the best example of this because of the white walls, but hopefully it gives you an idea of what you can do for your own videos. I'm now gonna bring in one last 
last node on this grade. And this is the part of the grade that just brings the entire thing together. And all I'm going to do is simply add a vignette. There's multiple ways to do this, but the simplest way is to open up the effects panel, type in vignette, and drag that onto the node. From here, I can adjust the size and the softness of the vignette. And then if I toggle this on and off, you can see that it just brings your eyes towards the subject, which in this case is Zane. So if we have a look at the before and after of the grade, this is before and this is after. You can see that it's a pretty big difference and it really adds some life to the image so it's not looking so dull. It's also making Zane pop out way more than it was before, which is important for a video like this. So now I just need to apply this grade to all of the A-roll clips. I would normally do this step at the start of an edit before all of the titles and images are on top of the timeline. But obviously because this is a re-edit, it's a bit different. To copy this grade over, all I need to do is select the graded clip and hit Command C, and then select all of the rest of the A-roll and any other A-roll clips that are around and hit Option, or if you're on Windows, Alt, V. So this is going to bring the paste the tributes menu up and I just want to make sure that the only thing ticked is color correction and then hit apply. This is now copy and pasted the grade onto the rest of the A-roll. And to save you from having to do these steps every single time you edit a video, you can actually save your grade to use on future videos. So if your footage has been filmed in the same place when with the same lighting like Zane does, then this is a huge time saver. All you have to do is come over to the color page, select your image that has the grade on, and then right click on the viewer and select grab still. Then if you come up to your gallery, in one of these tabs on the left, you'll see that still. And so if I was to reset this grade over here, I can then just come up to my still, right click it, select apply grade, and it's now applied that grade to my clip. And I can save this grade for other projects as well by right clicking it and selecting export and then saving it anywhere I like. Meaning I can open up a different project and then right click in the gallery and click import and then find that file and import it. So it can be used again from here. I've got a bunch of grades saved for different clients. It's really a huge time saver. But you could also take this a step further and just put this still into the power grades folder here and that way it will automatically show up in other projects inside of that project library so you don't have to import it each time both ways have their pluses and will save you lots of time and that is how i would color grade this footage in davinci resolve if you found this video helpful then watch this video next it's the original deep dive video that this color grading tutorial came from which shows how i would completely re-edit one of my subscribers videos i point out all of the mistakes they were making and walk you through exactly how to fix them